Hi, in this video I'm going to walk you through some of the uh, preferences and extensions that I use to set up my favorite um, code editor, uh, Visual Studio Code. Now, I say that it's my favorite, but you could still use something like Atom. I, I don't think Atom is that far behind um, VS Code, in my opinion. I used Atom for years, and it's a brilliant um, editor. It has, um, but I still think that VS Code is better because of the terminal and a, and a couple of other things that I'm, I'm going to show you in a second. It's really easy to install. You just download the file and uh, start it and just click next and install. One thing that I need you to do though is when you get to this uh, screen in the in installation process, make sure that you tick the open with code options, both of them, which give you this really um, useful feature that you just um, right click any folder and you get this option open with code. Um, you can have that with files as well. You can open any file with VS Code. So once you've installed it, we're going to get into VS Code. Okay, so I'm going to now open a, a project that I've been working on recently um, that I've done a tutorial on. And it's a Gatsby, it's a React app, basically. And uh, I want to demonstrate a couple of features. So here, when you open VS Code, you get this welcome screen, which has some recent uh, folders that you can open. Um, by the way, you can untick this show welcome page that if you don't want to, if you don't want this window open anymore. And uh, if we click on Control at, or you can go to Terminal and do New Terminal, you get this, and you get this really super cool uh, terminal which has uh, many features that um, on Atom you can get a terminal as well as a pa as a package as an extension but it's not as good as the terminal in VS Code now this is really useful because you don't have to open a separate terminal like each time you want to launch you know you start your project or build or whatever you want to switch windows here it's already integrated which makes it super useful so, and it doesn't even take up that much space. You put it at the bottom and it's uh, really cool. So, for example, you can open, let's say I'm going to open this file right here. Um, I can even put it to the side. So I can even put um, uh, the console on the side. So, so like this. Um, you can have multiple console consoles, like multiple CLI instances open. So, for example, if you had like um, your server, your backend server running on this one and your React server running on this one, you can do that. You can as well split the view. You can have as many as you want, which is really cool. Uh, I think it's a super cool feature in uh, VS Code. So, um, one other thing that I wanted to touch on, actually, let me close these. Let me bring back, bring this back to the, um, to the bottom. One thing that I want to touch on is if we go to preferences, um, so file preferences and uh, theme. I don't know uh, what's the default theme right now in uh, VS Code when you install it, but uh, you can use this, which is my favorite, the default dark plus. And uh, wait, where's theme? Did I lose theme? <laughs> Okay, so theme, you can use as well, if you have uh, migrated from Atom, you can use the Monokai, which I find really beautiful. Um, uh, you can tweak it a bit if you want as well. You can, uh, if I were to use Monokai, I would tweak and remove these um, italic uh, stuff because it's just less readable. Uh, but yeah, the default Dark Plus will do just fine. In my opinion, it's so much better to have your I, uh, IDE or text editor in a, um, have a dark background, because if you're going to be coding for uh, extended periods of time, if you have it, for example, the default light one, it's, it's so much strain on your eyes and your eyes get, um, uh, dry. Um, okay. So next thing we're going to talk about is extensions, which make this, uh, which extend the, obviously as by definition, extend the functionality of the of the IDE, uh, the text editor rather, rather. So one of my favorite ones is a uh, bracket pair colorizer, which is really cool, which uh, does exactly that. Uh, gives uh, curly brackets and parentheses colors, so you can distinguish which uh, which is which. So if you have like highly nested code, don't know if I have a good example. 
maybe this, yeah. So if you have some like deep nesting, you can click, for example, here on these parentheses, it will highlight, it will underline it. And if you click on something that's uh, a whole block, you will color this side and you will color the brackets themselves with different colors. So um, you will know whether to close this parentheses or square brackets or whatever or not. So this is a really cool extension that makes your code a bit more readable. And again, these extensions, if they save uh, 50, mill 50 milliseconds each time, uh, these these little periods of time add up and throughout a year maybe this extension will save you a couple of hours which is um, which is crazy for productivity um, the next extension I want to talk about is the ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets which is a really cool tool that gives you some snippets um, now there's a lot of them I don't use all of them I just use a couple of them um, to give some example, now this obviously targets mainly the React developers uh, out there. So to give you an example, you can use the import. So you can do imp tab and you get like this. So this is useful if, if the names are the same, you can click uh, alt, select this and alt select this. And for example, you can uh, bring Axios. Um, in this case, it's not that much faster, but you can also, uh, if you want to import using destructuring, for example, like in this case, getting link from Gatsby, you can do IMD and tab, and you just uh, do the name of the, you know, the module or the library, and then here you have your uh, function, oops, function, or whatever you want to get from this. So it's a little bit useful in, in importing, but its use for me mainly would have to be, um, let's do a new component, it's just do like comp.js, whatever. Uh, if you want to do like a functional component, you can just do RFC and it generates this. And you don't have to type import react or type any of this. And, or if it's a class-based component, you can do RCC and you get all of this, uh, which is uh, which I think is really cool uh, and saves up some time. And especially if you have like a lot of components and each time you type this, it's actually a lot of time wasted. Uh, now you, you have as well some shortcuts for certain libraries that are really popular. For example, prop types, which is a type checking thing that you use in React. You can just do, um, uh, I believe it's empty. Yeah. So you get prop types. You don't have to type this each time. Just do empty tab and you get this. And as well in your app.js where you need your, uh, router, you can bring the router, the route and, and link with one command doing like I M R R and tab and you as well get your browser router as router, which most people use it as a router because it's just, um, it makes more sense. Uh, one of my favorite things as well is the constructor. I personally always make a typo when I type the word constructor for some reason, where well, you can just do R const tab and you get the constructor that calls the super props and you get your state an empty state here which is super useful it's so quick compared to actually typing it r const and and you're already typing your st uh, your state and of course you can also go uh, here and and find some more uh, cool snippets that you can use now the next extension i want to talk about is um this extension, um, it doesn't do a lot, but it's actually pretty cool because um, by default, okay, let me revert back. So by default, if you click control plus, uh, which is the plus on your num number pad on the right on VS Code to make the text bigger, it makes everything bigger. So this panel here, uh, these icons, everything becomes bigger and it takes up more space. Uh, and it reduces space of where uh, that the code can take. But with this extension, when you set your uh, shortcuts, you can do this uh, and you just make the text bigger. So just the text, not everything else, which is really useful. So yeah, you can install this font size shortcuts thing and uh, you can read as well what it what else it does. You can reset, etc, etc. Okay, next one is this uh, import cost. Now this is, um, it's a cool tool. You get this uh, calculation of how big this library is gonna be eventually in your bundle. Uh, so for example, if I go here, 
Um, I know I'm using React Strap somewhere. Yeah, so you see something like React Strap is massive. It's a hundred, almost 120 kilobytes. So in this case, you could do something like a tree shaking where you just get like the sub module. You can go to this, then get it, not this, go to your, um, what else, library and get the, the exact, um, uh, the exact uh, component that you want to use which reduces the size of the bundle eventually so this is a cool tool and if you find that your whole library is like in this case for example in react is just seven kilobytes you you don't need to tree shake or anything because it's just seven kilobytes anyways so yeah it's a cool uh, import cost is cool it calculates um, how much this library will add to your bundle size next one will be markdown preview enhanced um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the best. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, they show um, this in an Atom theme. It's the best extension for preview and markdown files. And if you don't know what markdown files are, it's um, let me close this. It's a uh, it's an extension for writing files uh, that will be later turned into HTML, and uh, it has its own syntax. Um, for example, having when you have this installed you can just click here and it previews this text and let's say I want to add a list which the syntax for this would be star so this would be like list item one or list item one and I don't know why it's not automatically adding another one so list item two and uh, usually when I press enter it automatically adds another one but as you can see it previews the list and for example, if I were to add a code snippet here, uh, let's say it's a JavaScript code snippet, const variable equals 314. And um, if I give it JS here, I even get syntax highlighting, which is really cool. Um, uh, I'm not sure, I think I'm getting syntax highlighting because in this case, I'm using a library called prism.js, but I'm, I'm not sure if by default you get syntax highlighting, but yeah. Uh, it's a really cool tool to preview your markdown files. Okay, next extension, let me close this. Next extension is my absolute favorite extension of all time, Prettier. When I found this recently, I was like, how did I not, how was I not aware of this before? This this is a time saver. This is the, the winner in time saving. So when you install this, you need to go to your preferences, uh, settings, and let me go to the normal settings, the old settings. So you need to enable this uh, format on save. So look for format and uh, enable this format on save so that um, it's enabled, it's true here. So that each time you, uh, like let's say you typed something and it wasn't indented properly. So let's mess this up and uh, let's do like a, let's do some, JavaScript. Sometimes, for example, I type a, a, a promise and I don't want to like indent it as I'm going. Let's say the promise is called get posts and dot then gives me a result. And uh, I just want to console.log that result. And as well, it gives me, it could give me an error. And I want to console uh, error that error. And this is horrible, obviously. I would have to do enter and tab and all that uh, stuff, which actually takes up a fair amount of time. But with Prettier, you can just hit Control S and look at that. Everything is just indented. I can mess everything up like like this and hit Control S. Everything goes back to normal, which is super, super useful. Um, you don't have to worry about indentation at all and formatting your own code. It does it for you, which is brilliant. Uh, some some frameworks go even as far as including uh, the prettier as a dev dependency. So in this case, Gatsby does that, uh, which is uh, super cool. Yeah. So next um, is settings sync. It's not that important to have. Uh, this is really cool if you're working across multiple devices. It can link to your GitHub account and uh, upload your settings. And then when you log on a different computer, you just install settings sync on VS code on that machine and connect to your GitHub account and you sync all your uh, preferences and uh, extensions and everything. And you get your uh, favorite experience on, on VS code.
your personalized VS Code. Next one is VS Code icons. Now you might say, well, like, whoa, it's just icons. This is just for, um, you know, aesthetics, but actually it's not. Uh, if I go to preferences and change the icons to the default ones, and, and they've changed it before they, they used to have no icons. Now I think it's VS SETI. And this is like less, um, like the differences between the file types is, are less pronounced. So it takes a bit of processing when you look at it, you're like, okay, where's package JSON? And then it takes some time to find actually package JSON, at least for me. With these icons, uh, they even give icons to the folders, which make uh, the folders more visible, which is really cool. Like, look, it says NPM. It's so obvious that this is package JSON compared to the classic one. So it saves up a little bit of time, plus it looks really cool. Um, so yeah, these, uh, these are my preferences for uh, VS Code and my uh, extensions. I'm pretty sure there's so many more useful uh, extensions, but I feel like these are the core ones that you should have. And uh, there are some other things that uh, I have, for example, the Laravel extension. Uh, do I have it installed? Yeah, so the Laravel blade snippets, if you're developing on Laravel, it's really cool. It has a lot of cool snippets for Laravel and blade and stuff like that. PHP IntelliSense when you write PHP and, and a bunch of other really cool extensions um, on the VS Code mark marketplace. So yeah, this was my uh, VS Code video. I hope you found at least some really u some useful extension to install, or some useful preference, or uh, uh, or anything useful. Um, uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe if you liked the video. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I will be happy to address them. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. Bye.